as I was building my career as a quantum hardware engineer, people would always ask me what a quantum computer was or how to explain a quantum computer. And I think initially when I was just going through school, maybe I was like a freshman or a sophomore in college, I didn't really have a good way of explaining it. I was just kind of explaining it the same way that everyone else on the internet explained it. But as I developed my career and got more experience and developed my communication skills, I figured out a better way and have refined a better way of explaining what a quantum computer is to people without confusing them or giving them too much information or giving them jargon just to sound smart, right? So in general, when you are a scientist or an engineer, it is your responsibility to explain things in a way that people are able to understand. Because if you're unable to explain things in a way that people can understand, the impact of your work, it goes down. So you can maximize the impact of your work on the world by explaining it in a way that people can understand. And that also, that goes for your peers, the people that you are literally working with, and for people who are laymen, who don't have any understanding of the science or the engineering. But it's your responsibility to make sure that you can explain it to both. So when your parents ask you, your friends ask you, your grandma asks you, what is a quantum computer? This is, I think, um, my current version of how I would explain a quantum computer as a quantum hardware engineer working at IBM Quantum with you know two years approximately of experience working in the field. And ma many more actually years of experience just kind of uh, you know being an undergrad, working in um, research labs, doing my master's degree. So this is how I would explain a quantum computer to people right now. And the key here is it avoids jargon that people are not going to understand. And it gives them an actually accurate description of a quantum computer because most of the descriptions out there are inaccurate. So let's start. A quantum computer is a tool for solving problems that are impossible to solve using normal computers. That is our definition. A quantum computer is simply just a tool. A quantum computer solves problems that are impossible to solve using normal computers. Okay. Next, a quantum computer will never replace normal computers. A quantum computer solves different types of problems than normal computers. And so this is really to address the common misconception that, oh, everyone is just gonna be running on a quantum computer one day and a quantum computer is going to replace everyone's normal computer. That's not true. They run in tandem. And you can actually go a little bit more into depth when you say this. You say a quantum computer will never replace normal computers. A quantum computer will always work in conjunction with a normal computer. Right? They're synergistic. It's just a different type of tool. An analogy that you can give is a quantum computer is simply a tool, just like a normal computer is. A quantum computer is just like a microscope. Right, It's a tool that a scientist uses. A, a quantum computer is a tool that a scientist uses to help them solve a problem. Okay, next. A quantum computer operates in a fundamentally different way to a normal computer by using special properties of quantum physics. Now, this is going to answer the question of, of how is a quantum computer able to do these impossible things? And the general solution that people say is, oh, a quantum computer processes all the, the, the different combinations simultaneously. That's not true. That is simply just not true. And that like maze analogy of like, oh, the quantum computer explores every single path of the maze simultaneously. That is also not true. You can abstract all of those details away by saying a quantum computer operates fundamentally differently from a normal computer. And the way that it's able to do that is it uses special properties of quantum physics. They might ask you, what are the special properties of quantum physics? And then you can just say, they're really abstract and hard to explain. And we don't really have good ways of explaining them. You can name them superposition, entanglement, interference. You can say, these are the special properties of quantum physics, but they're really hard to explain without complicated physics and math. And then people will accept that, right? And then finally, you know, this is how, how the next logical question is like, okay, what does a quantum computer do then? You say, well, we're still discovering the best ways for using a quantum computer today. But right now we know quantum computers will be very useful for pharmaceutical, chemistry, and material science research, for example. We can use a quantum computer to help us discover new medicines or to build stronger materials. Those are things that people can relate to. We are also not being inaccurate. This is another place where you can say a quantum computer is simply just a tool for scientists and engineers to solve problems that aren't doable on a normal computer. So with that, I think this gives the perfect amount of description and accuracy to a person who doesn't have a lot of understanding of quantum physics or quantum computing or technology in general. 
because it gives them something that they can grab onto. And really the most important part is this first sentence. A quantum computer is a tool for solving problems that are impossible to solve using normal computers. That's all people need to know. That is like the one takeaway. So if you're ever teaching somebody about quantum computing, you're talking about it at a party, you're sitting around a bonfire talking about quantum computing, you're calling your grandma talking about quantum computing, make sure they take away that. A quantum computer is a tool for solving problems that are impossible to solve using normal computers. So this is my current version of how I explain quantum computing to people on a day-to-day -day basis as easy and as digestible as I can. If you're interested in becoming a quantum engineer like me, I work, I have my own quantum computer. I run experiments on my quantum computer every day and I test novel qubit control electronics. We can actually build one day a large scale and fault tolerant quantum computer. And if you're interested in kind of building a career around that, click the top link in the description. You might find that helpful towards building your own personal roadmap towards becoming a quantum engineer. You need help, you right? You need to focus on the right things. Um, and that top link in the description will help you. So with that, everyone, I want you to develop your communication skills. I want you to go out there and do good for the world. So try to think about the best way of explaining your work, whether it's quantum computing or anything else in technology. Do good work, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.